What is greatness? Okay, I like what this person said, I like what that person said, I like what I read here, I love my experience of what I've demonstrated, and the frontal lobe is gonna create a beautiful, beautiful understanding of what, how to evolve your experience. And when you, just no different than learning how to dance, learning a sport, learning a lines if you're an actor or an actress, a, a musician, you, you rehearse all the time. And the rehearsal is actually priming the brain for the experience. So now your brain is ready for the day. It's different than just going, oh, I'm not gonna react to my boss. Well, well you haven't done the work to come up with how to, how to overcome that. And then what did you install so you have circuit, you have raw materials to, to use. Now here's yeah. the hardest part. Can you teach your body emotionally what it would feel like if you, if you arrived at your future? And, and can you say, I'm not gonna get up until I feel that way? Now this is, mm. this is good work here because you'll have to come up with that emotion and get beyond the shame, the guilt, the unworthiness, the pain, the suffering. And this is battle. This is battle because your brain is gonna keep going to something that's gonna wanna make you feel that way. Then the analytical mind's gonna say, you can't do this, it's too hard, why don't you quit? And that's where everybody stops. But right on the other side of that is love. Mm. Right on the other side of that is gratitude. Right on the other side of that is freedom, right? So then if the person's willing to go a little further and practice a way to do that. And they could get in touch with that emotion and they can feel it. And when I feel it, I always say, and usually when it's really good, I say, remember this feeling, memorize this feeling, memorize it. I wanna- Make a I, snapshot of that feeling. I wanna, I wanna know, I wanna be able to bring this feeling up on command, so I'll let it go. Mm. And then I'll go back and say, let me see if I can do it again. Why am I trying to do it again? To remember, remembering is creating the circuitry to be able to produce it again. It's gonna become a skill. Now, I have something to walk into my condition in my life where I'm reacting. And now I have a plan. I've primed my brain and body to the future instead of the past. I've suppressed the past. Yeah. So now I have, I'm, I'm closing my eyes, disconnecting from the environment, overcoming my body, not thinking about the predictable future, the familiar past and time. I'm in the present moment. I'm ready to create. Why? Because I want to present myself to the world as an evolved version of yesterday. I would say, at what point are you done feeling that emotion? Gotcha. You want to so keep feeling feel it? Go, if, if you're not doing off. anything wrong, you're just yeah, taking yeah. too long. I mean, gotcha, like, gotcha. I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you to not feel emotion. I feel emotions, but again, I'm just going to move through them. I'm a super passionate person. And if I'm yeah. going in, I'm going all in. I'm not going half, halfway. But when I feel and I can catch myself, that's pretty cool. Gotcha. Because yes. now I can change it. No one, no one, nothing is doing that to me. I'll feel it. I'm not sitting there going, I'm not doing that. I'm not, there's no tool set there. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm steeping in the emotion. That's not it. I am saying, okay, I'm angry. In, the, in this moment in eternity, Joe Dispenza, what do you got? What do you got? This is the moment you're going to remember because mm -hmm. people who heal, people who have transcendental moments, people who break through, people who have the, the wealth, the freedom, when they look back at their life and they see all the days they chose themselves to show up for their meditation, mm. when they look back at those past moments, they're not looking back at the easy meditations. Mm -hmm. They're not falling in love with the person who had the good meditation. They're, they're falling in love with the person who sat in the fire. They're, they're, they remember those moments where they were like, I didn't give up on me. I believed in myself. I believed there was something on the other side of this feeling. I stuck with it. And all of a sudden it starts to change. And for some people it takes a little longer than others, but they're on it. Mm -hmm. And so then when they look back at their past and they see all those times it was hard and they, they went a little further, they're gonna fall in love with that yeah. person. And now their future self, who's already transformed, is drawing their past self to them in love. The There's moment. a future you right. that's already exists. You just gotta get there. Right. And he's he's in love with you. And the mm. only way you're gonna get there is by you being in love with and you. And being in love in the past. Yeah, but so then what is love then? So then huh. people think they confuse love with pleasure. Yes. Like a manicure or shopping spree. That's not love, that's pleasure. Mm -hmm. and, and the more whole we are, the less need for pleasure we have. You sit in the fire. I watched 1,025 people last week transform themselves. Mm. In the beginning, I was trying to find the door. I, they were, they were, I was bouncing off them, I just wouldn't quit. And then they started doing the work. They came up against themselves, they got frustrated, they got impatient, I kept reminding them. Their brain's going into high beta, their arousal is driving them further out of balance, and they started tempering the animal. 
And they started, I took them a little further and they sat through the fire. And all of a sudden it wasn't about the mystical experience. It wasn't about the wealth. It was about learning the formula. It wasn't about what they wanted. It was about overcoming themselves. They're learning the formula on how in that moment, if they could just relax and keep practicing, that little box begins to expand. And mm. now there's more, more, more room for them to relax in the unknown. I stretched them outside of the known and they survived. Yeah. And I keep stretching them and all of a sudden they're more present. And so they wanted, they wanted to come to the edge in the next meditation and go a little further. It was no longer me saying you gotta go. They were, they wanted the edge. They wanted to see what was standing in the way between them and their new relationship, mm -hmm. them and their healing. What, what was that thing that I wanna remove? I'm gonna, if not now, when, right? So they wanted to take it on because they, they forgot about their cell phones. We did it during the week of election, so nobody would care about us. They didn't right. care about the election. They didn't care about <laughs> wow. any disease. They were immersed and, and they retreated from their lives. Now, back to your question. I guarantee you those people, when they face circumstances in their life now, they're ready for their environment. Mm. In fact, they've lowered the volume to so many of those emotions. When people slash out at them or do things, they're gonna go, oh, come here. Are you hurting? Get over here, right, I'll give right. you a hug. Not like, oh. You know, they're not gonna do that. They're gonna be like, come here, I love you. Get over here, yeah. are you okay? It's just, they're not, there's not that anymore. They, they, they've kinda, they, they're kinda ready. So, mm. so the formula then, to answer your question, <laughs> is brain and heart coherence. And when you're in stress and you're in survival, when you're in danger, the arousal of the stress hormones creates a heighten, heightening of our senses and we become materialists and we narrow our focus on the material world and that's reality now. And mm. when we start trying to control reality and predict it and we have the perception that things are getting worse, all of a sudden we're shifting our attention to one person, to another person, to another problem, to another thing, to another text. And every one of those things, there's a neurological network in the brain. So the arousal of the stress hormones causes the brain to start firing incoherently. And now there's no energy in the brain because the incoherence is diminishing energy. It's waves that are canceling each other out. The brain goes into like this quiescence of no activity, but we're very little, very little performance. So then we said, okay, let's teach people how to take their attention off of everything known in this memory bank of the known self, the autobiographical self, the artifact of the past. Mm. Let's teach them how to go from a narrow object focus on anything material that's known in this three-dimensional reality to broadening their focus, mm. to putting their attention on energy, nothing, space, and going from a convergent focus to a divergent focus and opening their focus. We started noticing that the brain started to synchronize. The different compartments started to unify and the brain started functioning in a more holistic state and the person started feeling more chilled more poised, more clear. And what sinks in the brain mm. links in the brain. Mm. So you start seeing this kind of integration. And we can call people on the stage now and I can say, would you show the audience on a brain scan how to go in the gamma? Give me one second. Boom, they go right in the gamma. Wow. Can you show them how to go in the alpha coherent brainwave patterns? I can, give me a minute. Yeah. Alpha is like that creative state. Oh, when, creative state. When, the, when the brain starts slowing down analytical you know, oh, processing. Okay. So gamma then, is what? It's like super consciousness. That's like, that's the, like the, that's the big stuff. So when you disconnect from your environment and you close your eyes and there's less stimulation coming mm. in, we play music in the background, you're not eating, you're not smelling, you're not tasting, you're not feeling, there's less sensory information. Naturally, this mechanism starts to slow down and so there's less information yeah. and you go into alpha and you cross the analytical mind. And what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind. So now you're suppressing the, 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 the analytical mind that's saying you can, it's too hard, the voice goes away. And in alpha now, we're not looking for any kind of alpha, we're looking for coherent alpha. So as they open their focus and they sense space, the act of sensing and feeling mm. causes them to stop thinking and analyzing. So you start seeing energy leave the neocortex, right? If they do it really well and the body starts to fall asleep or it feels so comfortable that it can rest in the present moment and let it almost fall asleep and you're still conscious and awake, 
Now you're in theta. Mm. Now that's a that's hypnotic your, state. Your body's like vibrating almost. Yeah, the, the door between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind is wide open. It's very programmable. The formula is when you sense, you'll watch, you'll, we do this naturally when we go to bed at night. Yes. But now we're just taking you down the steps so you know the terrain, how to get there. In theta, when you're in that state, you can reprogram, you can rewrite the program. It's easier because you're out of this this thinking brain. So we shouldn't be thinking to reprogram or just You won't be thinking, you'll itself. be rehearsing. Rehearsing. You'll see yourself doing something. What should we rehearse? Whatever you want. What do you want? You want you want to be an excellent be handball player? Correct. You yeah. want to be the top. Yeah, yeah. You gotta rehearse. So you visualize what you want to create. Yeah, you you imagine. But but you it's better to do it when your body is very relaxed, or better yet, you forgot about your body. That's a better way to say Ooh. it. Yeah. So then when that theta happens, people are usually sitting like this, looking at the television, just before they go to bed at night, they're half awake and they're half asleep, and they're telling them you need a flu shot, they're telling uh, you, you, know, you, have to, you need this drug, you have this problem. Eat this food, yeah. It's going in, the analytical facilities are in the back seat. They're, you're, they're getting programmed to make that choice. They're, they're getting programmed in some way. So they're suggestible <laughs> to information. So now, you could be suggestible to your own auto-suggestions or information that you would want to rewrite as a program. So if you said in alpha or theta, <clears throat> I'm just not happy with how I did with my kids today. I, 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 gotta, I need another shot at it. And, and you're relaxed and you're present and you start reviewing how you're gonna be with them. I guarantee you, you start installing hardware there. Right. You start rewriting the program and you're so present that you can go through it. Then you go through it the next time, it's a little easier. Yeah. You go through it the next time, it's a little easier. You go through it the next time, your mind starts to wander, you, ah, you catch yourself, you come back, right. you do it again. Well, what are you doing? You're, you're rewriting the program and installing it, firing and wiring. I hope you enjoyed this amazing interview with Dr.